Alright, so welcome back, welcome back. So, a few trades to talk about. And season is finally about to get back in full swing. And, you know, teams are starting to make some moves. Teams are starting to retool their roster to get ready for the season. So, first trade I want to talk about. The Suns and the Thunder trade. So, Chris Paul and Abdel Nader for Kelly Oubre, Jalen Q, Ricky Rubio, Ty Jerome, and a 2022 draft pick. So, first things first, what does that mean for OKC? So, OKC now has 19 draft picks over six years and they still have Shea they still have Steven Adams and what they do from here they still you know need to figure out a system a coach and Kelly Oubre is a very good player he's very he's a good dreamy guy he's versatile he can get, get on transition, shoot the ball, he can defend. So that's a good wing player to have. And you have Ricky Rubio, who's been around the league, a veteran now. And he basically has, you know, helped teams get to the playoffs, run teams' offenses. And he's won overseas, you know. He's won with Spain. So he, he knows how to win. He knows how to conduct the team. He knows how to be a leader. And the one person I'm thinking about is Jalen LeCue. And the boy got bounce. The boy got some athleticism. And hopefully OKC can develop him. But OKC has a lot of these players who's kind of like LeCue on their roster where they're young, they're bouncy, but it's like, you don't understand what they're trying to do with them because it just seems like they're trying, you know, have them there on the court as, like, kind of, you know, like, I like to say throwaways, but it's like, you know, they just have them out there just playing. It's like, you're, you, when you watch the game, you're trying to figure out what role they play within the offense. So, really intrigued to see how they use him. Because he, he's young and he's a point guard, he's athletic, so... They could play him a lot more at the point, but then, you know, they got Rubio. Shea's came in as a point guard, but he's starting to transition more to a two. And I believe Steven Adams is still a free agent. So, I mean, sorry, Steven Adams, Delino Gallinari is a free agent. So we have to figure out what's going to happen with him. And with that being said... Chris Paul's on the Suns. So, CP3 going to the Suns means a lot for the Suns organization. One, is reuniting Chris Paul with Monty Williams, who was his coach in New Orleans. Chris Paul had some of his best years under Monty Williams. And, you know, with Monty and Chris Paul... Those two veterans, those two basketball minds, they can hopefully get the Suns back to the playoffs. And it also means Devin Booker has a, a point guard who can run the offense, who can take some pressure off of him. It does not knock on Ricky Rubio, but he's not Chris Paul. Honestly, he's not Chris Paul. Rubio's really good, but this is this is a Hall of Fame we're talking about. And it gives them that veteran leadership in their locker room, that guiding voice. And it also helps out Aiden because Chris Paul will probably, you know, give Aiden some direction, give him some leadership, give him some tips on how to improve his game, how to improve his body. And a lot of the big men that Chris Paul has played with have really benefited from playing with him. DeAndre Jordan, Blake Griffin, Tyson Chandler, Clint Capella, 
a lot of these bigs have been good with him. And all in all, we see the Suns probably being six or seven seed. And not too sure how their roster's gonna look by the season's beginning, but I can see them making some more small moves, but low-key important moves to solidify that roster. Because they gave up a good amount of players for that team, but they still have Mik Mikel Bridges, very good defender, very good 3 D guy. They still have Dario Sarge. They have Cam Johnson, who was pretty good last year as a stretch four. So we can see how that goes. Moving on to the next topic I want to talk about. James Harden wants out. Supposedly, allegedly, rumor, rumors have it that he wants out of Houston. So, as I like the Sixers, so as a Sixers fan, I would like to see him in Philadelphia. But, my thing about that is who would they have to give up to get James Harden? Would they have to give up Ben Simmons or Embiid? I'm I'm thinking more they're gonna probably give it give Ben Simmons up for Embiid. Only based on the fact that, you know, Darren Moore is coming from Houston and he likes players who can shoot the threes and, you know, run that kind of analytic game with his his team. So, James Harden, of course, coming from Houston, he knows what Daryl Morey wants to do. He knows the offense that he might want to play, and it might work. But we don't know what kind of offense Doc Rivers wants to implement with his team now because, you know, he might want to utilize Joel Bean more. He might want to utilize Ben Simmons more. He might want to utilize Tobias Harris more. And Tobias Harris came off his best season with Doc Rivers. So, we don't know how that's going to play out so far, but as a fan, I want to see him in Philly. But it's been a lot of speculations that he wants to go to the Nets. And the Nets, it could work. It definitely can work. But as a basketball purist, I'm not too sure if I want to see all three of them on the same team because these guys are, their main source of offense is isolation, KD, Kyrie, and Harden. So, you know, having these three guys on the court at the same time and they just, you know, iso, dribble, 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 it may get a little boring after a while, but it, it, they're so talented that they can make it work. But from a viewing standpoint as you know watching it not too sure if I want to see that and also we have to think about who Houston will want to trade for Harden R rumor has it that they want to trade either or receive Kyrie or KD for Harden makes sense Houston don't want to give up their, their franchise player for just role players in and start to rebuild. But it was coming out that, you know, they was probably going to try to trade Carol Levert and Spencer Dinwiddie, who's two very good players. And Levert, upcoming star, Dinwiddie, he's a very good player. He could be a star when he actually gets the, has the keys to the offense and has free reign. So, I feel like if Houston was to do that trade, it would actually be be pretty good. I think it would be decent. You know, I mean, they can, they can start a rebuild, but they can still be competitive because Dinwiddie is still relatively kind of young. Hazlevert is young. And then they got a new coach. Um, PG Tucker might be leaving because he's mad about his contract, allegedly. And it's going to be hard to, you know, see what Houston's going to do. But 
we got to talk about Westbrook. Because Westbrook supposedly wants out too. And the Knicks are trying to make a package for him. I feel like Randall could be the fit that the trade that the Knicks can do. Even though I like Randall. Now I'll tell you why I like Randall. Because a lot of people be knocking Randall. Randall, he is 19-point score, 19-10, you know, versatile big. And my thing about that is a lot of the Knicks fans don't like Randall because he gets turnovers, things of that sort. But we have to understand the circumstances of the roster, the makeup of the roster, the coaching and everything that's going on with the Knicks. Nobody on that team can create offense. Randall coming from the Pelicans was averaging about 21 points. And of course he's going to be, you know, the main guy on that team because all these players are pretty either young or they just can't score or can't create for themselves. So Randall would be the ideal person in that situation to be the go-to guy. And of course, Every star player gets turnovers. Like that's that's the nature of the game. Like you're the star, you're the best player on the team. He may not be a star, but he's the best player on the team. He's going to get turnovers. It's fine, but don't knock him for what he's trying to do. When where they're in a situation where it's not a lot to work with on that team, and coaching has something to do with it, you know, because maybe. Um, Fizio wanted Randall to be that kind of that point forward kind of guy. And he, honestly, it was like, what did you have to work with? And then they got the interim coach halfway through the year. So, again, they don't know what, what kind of offense they want to run. And the injuries played a part. But I'm from New York. I want to see Westbrook in New York for two things. One, we'll have an All Star again. We'll have a we'll have a a player who's going to give the Knicks a show, make them exciting again. And two, KD's in Brooklyn. Westbrook is in New York. Rivalry, exactly. So you have those two clashing in New York. That'll be fun to watch. And I feel like you know. Westbrook can help build confidence in RJ, Robinson, Frank, help them develop their game, help them build their confidence, help give them the leadership that they kind of need. So the last trade I want to talk about is Dennis Schroeder to the Lakers for a draft pick, for the 28th pick, and Danny Green. It's a pretty good trade because, you know, honestly, the Lakers kind of just got a steal because Dennis Schroeder coming off his best season was up there for six man of the year and 20, 19 point score off the bench arguably I feel like he should have got six man of the year and you're getting, you're getting rid of Danny Green and you know Danny Green struggled during the playoffs he didn't shoot the ball that well so you know it's it makes sense that you know alright let's we can get we can afford to get rid of Danny Green because we got Avery Bradley coming back. They might re-sign KCP. Rondo might be gone though, but so since Rondo's gone, he you know we get we get a better version of Rondo and Dennis Schroeder, and we, with Avery Bradley coming back, if he resigns or KCP, then you know that makes Danny Green expendable, and also you know you still have Jr. on the roster, Deion Waiters. You still have these players who can actually create offense and shoot the ball. So, you know, Danny Green was pretty expendable. So, the Lakers, they're really doing what they have to do to repeat. They might need a star, a third star. If Dennis Schroeder, they make him into that, we'll see what happens. But, season's going to start soon. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Don't forget to like, share, comment on this video and enjoy let the all season begin guys